Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 12 of the series where I'm building this here uh, telly-ish sort of a looking guitar. And it's also the series where I'm learning how to use my Shark HD 510 CNC machine. And if you hadn't seen the earlier uh, episodes of this series, I'll go ahead and post a link up there right now so you can go check that out. But then come on back because we're ready to move on to the next stage. And the next stage in this guitar is going to be we're going to go ahead and drill uh, all of our holes. This is a hip shot string through bridge. We're going to drill all our uh, string holes to go through the body. I'm going to show you how I get really super straight uh, string ferrules uh, line up here in the back. And we're going to get this guy set and we're going to of course take it all off so we can proceed on with the finishing of this guitar. But I want to take care of this now so I'm not drilling and everything on a, uh, on a finished guitar and take the chance of chipping paint or something like that. Now let me point out too that I know for sure I could do this work with the CNC machine and I was a little apprehensive to do it on this one because I'm just learning how to do it and I've got to make absolutely sure that this thing is not only the perfect distance from the nut this way, it's also perfectly centered up this way and I was a little bit apprehensive to do that with the CNC machine not knowing what I now know. Uh, so next guitar, I um, think I'm going to go ahead and drill these string throughs and the string through ferrules with the CNC machine. And, uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to get out my tools and I'm going to turn the camera down here and I'll show you how I do it. Anyway, let's get rolling with that right now. Okay, so this is my bridge. It's a, like I said, it's a hip shot string through uh, just a flat bridge. And I'm going to set it, uh, I want to make absolutely sure of two things. One, it's centered this way. Now, of course, I have the center line on the guitar, which I am, you know, almost absolutely certain it is center line with this neck perfectly all the way through because I checked it before. But uh, just as a, a level of precaution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my straight edge here and I'm going to put it along each side of the neck, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and draw these two lines, one on either side, and I'm going to use this as well as the center line of the center joint on the body to be sure that we are absolutely centered up. Okay, so I got that. While I'm at it, I'm going to also go ahead and lay out my 25 and a half inch scale length, which is right there. I'm going to mark that right here. Okay, there's my 25 and a half. And I'll get my little square out here and I'll go off of the center line on the body which is very hard to see. I'm actually going to have to darken up that center line a little bit because that joint turned out really, really nice and it's really hard to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it in just like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and also square my 25 and a half inch line all the way through. like so. Got a little errant line going there. Let me erase that. Okay. Now what I think I want to do too, is I'm going to get my center finding ruler and look and see if the neck agrees with my center line. So I've got the zero on my center finding rule there and I have one inch and five thirty seconds from my neckline there and I have one inch and five thirty seconds there so that thing really really came out straight so that's that's excellent okay so now I also have my, I put in two of the, uh, the uh, bridge pieces in here and I've got them screwed in so where the screw 
is almost to the inside of the thing here. So that is really as about as, as uh, far that way as you want those bridges because you want that screw to have several uh, threads of attachment into the bridge piece. So I've basically got those moved as far forward as I'm going to want them. Which I think that looks, I think that is probably good right here. So now I'm going to take and mark that center hole. Nice. Okay, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill that out. I'm going to put in one screw. So I'm going to drill and put in one of those bridge screws right there. We're going to anchor that bridge down and I'm going to go back through and I'm going to check it, make sure we're good on our widths, lengths, and all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to start marking out and drilling our uh, string ferrules. wax on the screw. Right there. Nice. Okay, we are good with that. Okay, now that's in good place. I'm going to go ahead and drill in the other two screws since this is a good spot for this. Okay, so these string through holes in this bridge plate, it's a 5 30 seconds hole. So I've got a 5 30 seconds bit here, and we're going to go ahead over the drill press, and I'm going to drill the two outside ones. I'm going to drill the high E string and the low E string, and I'm going to run those all the way through the body. Okay, now we're going to drill these other four strings. We're going to drill them all, but maybe uh, we'll stop maybe an inch or a half inch short of the back of the guitar. And we're going to drill those without drilling them all the way through. So that's the first step. Then we'll come back over here and I'll show you how we're going to drill out the ferrules in the back and finish off these four holes in the middle. And that's how we're going to get it really straight. So for now, we're going to go over to the drill press. We're going to drill these guys out and then come back over here. So a couple things to remember when drilling something like this is that drill bit will move on you once it gets inside that wood. That point of the drill bit can bend and start walking off in the wrong direction. So you want to start with a really sharp drill bit and you want to only drill maybe about a quarter of an inch at a time and you keep backing it out to get the wood chips out so it doesn't heat up too much. And that's also why I'll only drill the two outside, the low E and high E string, all the way through. So I have two reference points on the back that then I can use my template on the back side and get the string ferrules drilled with the 5 16 bit really, really straight.
Okay, so I've got my 532nd inch drill bit and I have also this uh, center uh, punch that's also 532nds. And I'm going to go ahead and put the drill bit in one of those two holes, just like that. And the 532nds center punch in the other hole. Now this is a this is a jig I made a long time ago. It's in a piece of epay, which is also known as ironwood, which uh, really holds up well against a drill bit going through it. Uh, so it's lasted me quite a long time. And I was very careful when I made this to drill it as absolutely perfectly straight as I possibly could. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to center my two my two uh, marking pins here, I'm going to center it in the two outside holes, double-sided sticky tape this down, and then pull those two pins out and use this as a guide to run a 5 16 drill bit about a half inch into the back of the body, which is going to give me enough, enough depth for the string ferrules. So I'm going to get this uh, little double-sided sticky tape and get this on there, and we're going to start drilling again. So this method works really well. Like I said, I've used that thing uh, many, many times. And, uh, and it continues to just uh, work out very well each time. And it's a very simple method to do it. Um, one thing I didn't do on this one, I'm not really sure why I didn't, but I, I would normally walk over to my drill press and light up on the drill press and drill it, but I didn't on this one, I just drilled it by hand. Which can make it a little tougher because uh, once, you, once that point on the drill bit goes in there and grabs those uh, grabs those other 532nd holes in there, it'll try to pull that drill bit down. You can see the thing kind of jumping a little bit. And, and I should have just stopped and gone over the drill press, but I mean, it all turned out all right, but you know, sometimes a lazy man works twice as hard. But it really came out well. And I've got my piece of tape on there. I set it at an inch and a quarter, so my hole in the back of the body would be a half inch deep, which is what is correct for those uh, string ferrules that I use. Just checking it out to see that it came out straight and it did. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is we got to put in the input jack or the output jack, depending on which way you're looking at it. And uh, and I'm using this long barreled type. It's it's not the normal one I use. I normally use the larger one that involves a plate to mount it. Uh, that takes a seven eighths of an inch hole. But as you know, this body is completely rounded on the end, so I just don't have a spot to put that that big flat plate. So I'm going to use this type here, and this takes a half inch hole and it'll just rest on that lip on the edge, and it's got a little nut and a washer to go on the inside. So normally I like to place my jacks like, like right here on the corner, but if you could see that right there, I have my, uh, my tone potentiometers right there is gonna be in the way. So I'm gonna rotate this guy down to here, and I'm gonna run it in about like so. I think that's a totally acceptable spot still. Um, this is long enough to make it through the body. The body is only about three quarters of an inch thick over here, so that'll fit in there just fine. And if I place it uh, firmly up against that, I could see that this little line I've got right here, which I marked with my pencil, is roughly the angle it's going to come into the body right there. So I'm going to have to drill basically on that line, centered on the body this way, and I think that'll work out just fine. And I'll make all my attachments, I'll be able to reach to it, and make all my attachments from the inside. So anyway, that's what we're gonna work on right now. I'm gonna get a center line marked on this, and I'm gonna clamp this body onto my drill press to hold it nice and steady for me so I can line it up and I get a really nice hole at that angle. So that's what we're gonna do. So you really can't see it that well, but I've got this bracket that I made up uh, that I screw down on top of my drill press that I could clamp the body, guitar body through to it so I could drill these input jack holes 
And uh, why I didn't uh, drill this hole before I put the neck on the thing, I will never know. But So I had to do a little finagling to get the thing hanging off the side of the uh, drill press base, but, but it worked out all right. And I spent a good bit of time lining it up in both directions and making sure the angle was right. And uh, it was clamped down and I just proceeded to drill that half inch hole and it, and it turned out really well. Definitely gonna have to flatten that off or dish it out or something a little bit. I'm not happy with the way that's sticking out. I'm, I may use a router bit. I'll have to think about that. May set up a little jig with the router bit and router just a little dish in there which will sink that in just a little bit. But I think overall that's not a terrible placement for that. So we're gonna go with that. So I did just that. I made a little, uh, made a little uh, base uh, template to hold my router, to ride my router on, and I drilled a 7 8 hole in it. And that's a half inch uh, bull nose bit. It's a top bearing bull nose bit that just uh, rides on the edge of that, uh, the bearing rides on the edge of that 7 8 hole. And it turned out really cool, and I really like the way it looks. I think when it's painted and that thing's recessed in that little dish, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Well, folks, that's about it for this one. I think it came out real great. The bridge placement turned out real nice. I got a real nice uh, string ferrule holes back here. I think it's gonna look cool when it's done. And I'm really digging that little, uh, that little dished out area I did for the input jack. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Anyway, I hope somebody got a little something they could take out of this and, uh, and use it for themselves. I enjoyed making the video and I enjoy the heck out of making guitars too. Anyway, if you all come on back next week, we're gonna be uh, starting the finishing process in this guitar. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.